fans have been buzzing since the Graham McTavish casting for the new Game of Thrones series was announced, but little was known about what that entailed other than he'd have some parts in the highly anticipated prequel series. In this video, we'll break down everything we know about Graham's character and the series as a whole, as well as some high praise about the show given by George R. R. Martin on his blog earlier this week, and one incredible Easter egg from a recent teaser trailer that you probably missed. First up, who is Graham playing in the show? It's been revealed that Graham McTavish joined the House of the Dragon cast as Sir Harold Westerling, an honorable member of the Kingsguard and protector for heir apparent Rhaenyra Targaryen. In most fantasy and medieval tales, knights are incredibly flat and uninteresting characters as their personalities are effectively removed and in their place are unfeeling protectors of the king. However, in the world of Game of Thrones, the Kingsguard, a little reserved for the most elite knights in the Southern Realms, have given us some of the most complex and interesting characters in the whole universe. Jamie Lannister, The Hound, Barristan Selmy, and all were given rich characters that do far more than what their kings tell them, and often far less. In the beginning of House of the Dragon, Westeros has a few decades of peace and prosperity for the realm, which is fantastic for all those farmers and ranchers who don't like their cornfields becoming battlefields. But it can be a little boring for former military commanders and knights such as Westerling. Westerling is said to be feeling a loss of purpose in his role as Kingsguard with very little to do in protect, but this will likely be very short-lived. We can expect Graham's character to play a crucial role in the series as the central conflict directly involves him as both the most respected member of the King's Guard and as the personal guardian to Princess Rhaenyra, the heir to the throne. He'll be faced with an incredibly difficult choice as two factions form within the dynasty, one behind Rhaenyra and one behind King Viserys. So what is the series about? The series takes place around 150 years prior to Robert's Rebellion and the events of the entire first series. It's the height of the Targaryen Empire, and King Viserys, played by Paddy Constantine, has named his daughter Rhaenyra as the heir to the throne since he's been unable to sire a son, and he needs to establish a succession plan, because, as we know, the absence of a clear succession plan is a surefire way to civil war in Westeros. But miraculously, after decades of tiring, Viserys gets the son he'd always wanted. The conflict is that Rhaenyra has been the heir apparent for so long. Many people have already declared their loyalty to her and don't agree with Viserys naming an infant as the successor when someone who's already been groomed and readied is right there. This ideological split divides Westeros and hurls them down the path to what become the bloodiest civil war in the 12,000 year history of Westeros. This making Westerling so crucial because he has vested interest in both sides, one to protect Rhaenyra and one to honor the king. That's not to say Graham is guaranteed to be a central character all throughout the series run. It is Game of Thrones after all. Everyone, and I mean everyone, is liable to get beheaded at a moment's notice. McTavish has developed quite the reputation among the fantasy community, having played Dwalin in the Lord of the Rings franchise, Dougal Mackenzie in the Outlander series, and now Westerling in House of the Dragon. He also had a prominent role in the Seth Rogen-produced Preacher series on AMC as the Saint of Killers. Now, what did George R. R. Martin have to say about the series? One of the few people who actually know what's going on in the series is Martin, who, although his work Fire and Blood is what the series is based on, there aren't many specific scenes in the book. The novel is written as a compendium of the 300-year Targaryen dynasty, told like a history book from, presumably, one of the Meisters. While the outline for House of the Dragon is intact, the showrunner and staff writers of the series have the difficult position of filling in all the gaps of Martin's novel. That being said, Martin is said to be in constant contact with the show, giving feedback and answering questions to make sure it stays as true to his vision as possible. He had this to say in his blog the other week, I've now watched rough cuts of nine of the 10 episodes, and I continue to be impressed. He went on, the acting, the directing, and writing are first rate. And yes, for all you book fans, it is my story. Sure, there are some changes from Fire and Blood, but I think Ryan Condal and his writers made good choices, even some improvements. Hearsay, I know, but being the author, I'm allowed to say so. If that doesn't get you excited about what they have in store for us, then I don't know what to tell you. August can't come soon enough. So what other improvements can we expect? One of the ways a lot of people felt the Game of Thrones series fell short, besides the final seasons of course, is the lack of diversity that was present throughout the show. There are some reasons for it. Westeros is modeled after medieval Europe, and medieval Europe wasn't exactly a melting pot of cultures. However, the world of Game of Thrones is more than just Westeros. Both Essos and the islands south of Dorne present endless opportunities as the cultures in those places have been largely left to the imagination of the readers, and by extension, the imaginations of the show's writers. In a recent interview with Entertainment Weekly, showrunner Ryan Condal talked about exactly this, saying bluntly,
importantly, it was very important for Miguel and I to create a show that was not another bunch of white people on the screen. We wanted to find a way to put diversity in the show, but we didn't want to do it in a way that felt like it was an afterthought, or worse, tokenism. This seems like very solid evidence that they'll be taking advantage of the obscurity president in Fire and Blood and using it to create a show that all cultures can feel represented in, without it feeling contrived. One of the inroads to diversity we can confirm they've taken to naturally include non-white people into the cast is through Rhaenyra's Targaryen's marriage to Corlys Velaryon, played by Steve Toussaint. The combining of those families was integral to the Targaryen Empire, as the Velaryons conquered the seas and the Targaryens conquered the air on the backs of their dragons. While the Velaryons in the book are an offshoot to the Targaryen clan, which is why Corlys is married to Rhaenyra's in the first place, because, well, you know. So it stands to reason that Velaryons would have similar features as the fair-haired, steel-eyed dragon tamers. For what it's worth, George R. R. Martin himself claims that he toyed with the idea of making the Valerians black when he was writing the compendium piece, but ultimately decided against it. Lastly, you said something about an easter egg? You may have missed it, but there was something familiar about the clip in the teaser trailer which featured Alicent Hightower, played by Olivia Cook, and she's scurrying through the throne room, knife in hand, presumably about to use it on some unlucky sap. But when you look closer, you can see a few eye-catching features on the dagger. There's the ebony, dragon-boned hilt, the ruby red gem in the center, the gentle curve of the Valerian blade. People assumed right out the gate that this was the same cat's paw blade that killed the Night King, and the same blade meant to finish off Bronn in the first season of Game of Thrones. Also the same blade that through a series of unfortunate events almost caused our beloved Tyrion to fly out to the moon door. Needless to say, the blade has a bit of a history, and we're going to see even more of it in House of the Dragon. The cast initially blew off the notion that this was the same blade in the show. However, it's been revealed that they were just referring to the fact that the showrunners had a new cat's paw blade commissioned to make it appear a little more fresh. That being said, the eagle-eyed fans who noticed that in the trailer were in fact correct. What else is new? If showrunners Condal and Sapignik maintain the level of detail through the show, they should have no trouble keeping both show and book fans happy throughout. Let us know what you think House of the Dragon has in store for us, and let us know what you're most excited to see next month.